Welcome to Hustaf and Macarbo's channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how to replace the connector plate on a Mercedes-Benz C-Class models equipped with a 5-speed automatic transmission. The reason why we're replacing this connector plate is because this is an item that tends to malfunction eventually. This vehicle right here has 215,000 miles and before this connector plate starts giving us problems we're going to go ahead and replace it as part of a maintenance issue, not so much because it's malfunctioning, at least not yet. Uh, when the connector plate malfunctions, it causes the transmission to have erratic shifting. So like I just mentioned, we're going to replace it to avoid that from happening in the future, since we're planning to keep this vehicle for at least another 100,000 miles. Let's we'll see how it goes. And because in order to gain access to the connector plate, it's necessary to remove the transmission pan, we're going to go ahead and install a brand new filter, brand new gasket, and obviously a brand new fluid. And even though this is a 2000 C230, these steps will be similar for all the other C-Class models equipped with a 5-speed transmission. So, let's get started. Place a clean pan under the transmission and remove the fluid by removing the drain plug. Once the fluid is done draining, install a new gasket and install the drain plug back on. Make sure it's tight. Remove the bolt that hold the transmission pan in place. Try to keep them in you know, organized because they do have their, uh, they have brackets um, that help uh, keep the pan in place. See, these are the brackets right there I'm talking about. Leave a couple of them loose and then remove the other ones. That way you can uh, take the last two by hand, make it easy. Remove the heat shield bolt and remove the heat shield. Slide it out, pulling it down. Okay, so once it's Take the last two by hand. See how this bracket is. Alright, so I'll just remove the pan. Okay, the filter just snaps in place to pull it down. Before removing the valve body, it is necessary to remove the connector. I'm not gonna include that in this video because we made another video uh, where our tech Joe explain how to replace this connector so I'm just gonna put a link on this video that way you can learn how to remove it and we can move on to the main part of this one which is the connector plate next step is to remove the valve body so you gotta remove all the bolts that hold it in place remove all of them except two one in the front and one in the back uh, that way you can remove those by hand and then drop the valve body down This is a messy job. If you need to wear gloves, go ahead and wear gloves. 
Carefully lower it down steady so you don't damage it. Alright, so there it sits. Now I'm gonna drag it out, put it on a workbench, and then move on from there. Alright, so I got the uh, valve body with the connector plate still installed, obviously, on a clean workbench. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this snap in place. Keep them in their original locations. And remember, if you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. The solenoid, the shift solenoids are held by uh, bolts in the springs. The size of the bolts is the same as the as the same as the valve body, which is P30s. So. Take them off. Same thing. Keep them in the original locations. Solenoids don't mix them. Put them back where they were. So I must come out just by pulling them out. They could get stuck. These are coming out easily, but I'm sure it can go either way. Okay, this one was a bit stuck. Not too bad. Once all the cell are set out, just remove the the connector plate. It's gonna it snaps in place. So just pull it out. And, uh, it'll come out. There. All right. So that's the old one. You can wipe some of the fluid out if you like. Try not to use something that's going to put lint in there. If the fluid's not too bad, like this one, you can leave it. There are some screens in there. Don't lose them. Right here, there are screens where the cell lines go. This doesn't require a paper gasket, so that's one of the advantages of this transmission. 
otherwise uh, when doing this job you would have to replace the valve body gasket but it's, uh, it's metal so you don't need to. I'm not going to remove any more tranny fluid and like I said this transmission was not malfunctioning and this is just preventative maintenance. Okay, so the new connector plate goes in the same way the other one came out, you know, just like that. And this pin is gonna needs to align right there. Okay, make sure it's aligned. And uh, make sure everything is aligned properly. There are pins right here. That is this pin is gonna align right there. So if both of those are aligned, it should snap in place without creating any problems. You can feel it. And then obviously don't force the thing there. Because if you force it you're gonna damage it. Okay, connectors in place. And then your solenoids. Just wipe the contacts if needed, depending on how they look. Still has tranny fluid, so it's gonna slide easily. No need for me to lubricate it. So put it back in there. Okay, and remember, back in the same location they came out of. Okay. Then it's gonna have its bracket that holds them in place. There was not a specific torque spec that I could find for these bolts, so you can do two ways. Uh, you can try to tighten them about the same as they were when you took them off, or you can try to use a torque wrench when you're removing your old ones and try to see uh, what specific torque they start coming off. That will give you an idea how tight these bolts were. You don't want to leave them too loose because they'll come off and then your transmission will start malfunctioning. If you over tighten them, you're going to cross thread them or break the bolts. So either way, it's not good. So I'm just going by, I'm just going to tighten them about the same tightness that they were when I loosened them up. So it's not a lot. They're not big bolts. So don't want to break them. About right there. Right there. About right there. Okay. A little bit of oil there. The cover's back on. Snap in place, just like that. The other one on. Perfect. Okay. Swipe the mine surface again. On both sides. And then your valve body is ready to be installed. When you install this thing back on, okay. 
make sure this right here when you're installing the valve body make sure that the part that this goes into slides in because uh, if it's not aligned then it's not going to shift properly plus you could break it so be very careful when you're installing it uh, and guide this properly other than that this is just going to go back up the same way it came out you know just just straight up and then install the bolts that hold it in place back on the torque for the bolts that hold this valve body in place is 72 inch pounds and you know start from the center you know start center bolt and this well for one just just make sure they're all snug first then start center bolt tighten them up maybe like a 40 inch pounds do them all you know center then the outer ones you can either do it on two or three steps you know the last one is going to be 72 inch pounds so do it in increments that way uh, you allow the valve body to seat correctly against the transmission housing in order not to make this video so long we're gonna stop right here. Now remember, I am gonna include two links on this video. One of them explains how to change the transmission filter. The other video explains how to replace the connector that attaches to the plate that we just replaced, to the connector plate. So with those two links and the steps that we show you on this video, those will be enough to successfully replace the connector plate on your Mercedes-Benz. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We upload videos regularly. Also, don't forget to visit our online store. We have a great selection of accessories for cars, trucks, and SUVs. See you next time.